in the car world a cheap car a cheap premium car cheap luxury cars even will make all these car guys shy away because no one really wants to associate themselves with cheap cars or the word cheap bikers however don't have these kind of inhibitions in fact bikers won't have a problem with a cheap motorcycle as long as it promises to be a lot of fun and that is exactly what this cheapest triumph is all about now i also believe that bikers are perennially poor people because no matter what we ride anything from a moped to the sickest two wheels on the road they'll often make us spend on parts accessories gear or simply on leisure rides which we seem to take a lot more often than the car guys now have you seen that meme that says teach your kids the love of motorcycles and they'll never have money for drugs that meme sort of stems from a similar school of thought now if your parents also raised you to be a biker and you are in that age where you probably want to get yourself your first big motorcycle the triumph trident could actually work quite well for you that is if you like sporty roadsters because for the classics you would have to stretch to the street twin which is a lack more on the ex showroom price that said the trident does have some retro cues to it in the round headlamp the rounded tank slim fox and the edgy master cylinder while the trident does cast a silhouette of a sporty roadster like its counterpart from the 90s it is tightly packaged and has a lean body structure that the instagramming gen z are likely to appreciate the trident also silently targets those wanting to upgrade from the ktm 250s or 390s and if you're one of those uh, you will realize when you get on board this motorcycle that it isn't a very small motorcycle in fact it feels a size or a size and a half larger than either of the 390s what it doesn't have is the edgy design and the loud graphics that make the ktms so popular but i think the trident looks smart proportionate and approachable Now for uh someone like me who is an average 58 it fits quite nicely and even for shorter riders it's not going to feel bulky or overwhelming Its 805 mm seat height is easy for most riders thanks to its narrow profile while a fat cushioning and a wide pillion seat ensures that comfort over long distances for two isn't compromised The handlebars are wider than a street triple to offer better leverage in the city environments but an early steering lock limits its flexibility for navigating or turning in tight spaces the handlebars are wider than the street triple almost comparable to the street twin uh, but they are tilted towards the rider a little bit more uh, so with that with the raised foot peg position gives you a bit of a relaxed yet sporty riding posture uh, both uh, that you can enjoy in the street city as well as winding roads like these Now the tank also comes with these recesses and it has this nice plastic panel and as long as you don't polish it it should provide a decent traction uh, for your knees under braking or while sport riding the tank itself uh, it feels uh, well it's narrow towards uh, your thighs but it feels nice and big it feels like a big bike it gives you that big bike feel which is what most of you would want from a motorcycle like this and uh, it still has an overall light and airy feel to it in a very street triple way But to mark a clear distinction from the Street Fighter, the Trident goes with a single round headlight with horizontally split LED lamps that work pretty well for city use but not so much for highway. And then there is the matching single round instrumentation with horizontally split displays which are easy to read at all times of the day. Unlike the Street Triple, the cable management is also a bit better on the Trident. The mirrors are average, but I'm glad they went with this wider design instead of a round one. The tail section looks the most modern. It has hints of the Street Triple and the Daytona in its pointy end, but the tail light looks a bit more sophisticated with the little Triumph logo embedded in it. It's touches like these in the tank, handlebars and headlights that take the attention away from some of the relatively cheap bits like the switchgear quality or the entry spec suspension and brakes and leave you with a feeling that the Trident is a sophisticated motorcycle, which it largely is. The overall fit and finish are hard to find faults with and generally feel better than the motorcycles that you are likely to be upgrading from. Like a typical roadster, the chassis elements of the Trident are nice and exposed, but at the same time because of the tight packaging, nothing over here looks messy or industrial, and that's a very good thing. The Trident proudly shows off its bespoke steel tubular frame and the swing arm has a conventional straight arm on the left side 
and a gull arm on the right, which along with the underbelly exhaust canister that it was designed for, makes the right side the prettiest angle for the Trident. The chassis is suspended by 41mm non-adjustable upside-down forks up front and a preload adjustable monoshock at the rear. While I said that the suspension elements feature at the value end of the inventory list, they do their job pretty well. Uh, there is a nice damp feeling to it, both the front and the rear feel harmonious and uh, it gives you a nice supple ride on most of the undulated surfaces that the Indian roads will throw at you. In comparison, something like the Kawasaki Z650, it feels a bit too bouncy at the rear end. This one doesn't feel like that. That said, there is a pronounced dive under heavy braking. There's also a bit of squatting when you uh, give this bike some hard acceleration. And what that translates into is that if you were to carry your braking onto a speed breaker or into a pothole, the suspension will bottom out. In fact, in a similar scenario, you're also uh, very likely to scrape the underbelly exhaust, especially on tall speed humps. In fact, the ground clearance will always become a matter of worry if you don't adjust the preload for the pillion and the luggage. Now, if you want a motorcycle that will enable you to glide over all these kind of undulations or all these kind of road surfaces, you are better off with an adventure variant. Now, the adventure variant on this particular platform is likely in the works, that is what we hear. But as of now, the Versus 650 or the Honda CB500X are your only options in this particular price bracket. The braking hardware comes from the Value Crate 2, featuring sliding type Nissan calipers at the front and the rear. On a cold start this morning, the brakes never felt worrisome. They feel nice in the city, the brake uh, lever feel is also quite nice, it's progressive. And even a day-long ride in these mountain roads, they never really felt that uh, you know they had some kind of a fade or that spongy or the wooden feel. All of that wasn't there, so no real room for complaint. However, if you were to take this motorcycle to the occasional track day, after a few hot laps, the brakes might feel inadequate. The engine won't disappoint no matter where you are riding, street, mountains or the track. This 660cc engine is derived from the Daytona, but apart from the platform design and engineering, it has little in common with the legendary 675. That said, most of the internals have been revised, reworked, completely new components, cams, pins, the pistons, the heads, the intake, everything is new on this particular engine. Uh, of course, uh, if you were to compare the specs, it uh, runs a, a slightly shorter board but a longer stroke than the Daytona. And if you were to compare it to the engine, a 660cc engine of the Street Triple S, the new one which is not sold to us, this has a larger bow and a shorter stroke. But compared to both those engines, this one has a similar sound profile, but it's not as quick revving as either of those two bikes, not as quick revving as the new Street Triple R even. But even on the move, the triple sounds just as enticing as you expect it to be. In fact, I think under 9 lakh rupees, this is easily the best sounding motorcycle. And don't you dare bring up the Benelis. Take a listen. Compared to either of these siblings, it has a different intake system too to achieve that narrow seat and tank geometry. But the intake wine doesn't feel very different than its bolder siblings and onlookers will hear the pleasant whistling sound of a triple. The powertrain also features a slip and assist clutch which makes for a lighter clutch lever feel and there's hardly any hopping under harsh downshifting. The gearbox feels a bit clunkier than my Daytona though. And I strongly recommend opting for the slick bi-directional quick shifter if you are into sport riding. This new engine also features ride by wire which enables two riding modes, a dull rain and a peppy road mode, a first for this segment. Apart from the eagerness of the throttle, they also alert the alertness of the always-on ABS and the switchable traction control system. My ride to and from the airport was a rainy one, but thankfully on these inviting roads here in Dehradun, uh, it's been all nice and dry. That's why I've not been able to use this rain mode as such. But I'm very sure that this rain mode is going to be just as overcautious as any other Triumph. But if you are an old timer returning to the joys of motorcycling or if you are a newbie, this is your first big bike, then I think you're going to appreciate this basic yet effective safety net. Now the road mode, it's nice and playful, just like the 81 horses that this engine churns out. 
and the gearing is short and that gives you a nice quick acceleration much quicker than what the specs otherwise suggest our tests in these hilly regions show a 0 to 100 time of 4.6 seconds which is only about a second slower than our street triple r timings near the coast triumph also says that the trident will ride past 200 kilometers an hour if you so wish though i believe it will take a while to get there but the takeaway is that the trident never really feels underpowered we didn't get a chance to run the fuel economy tests but a 250 to 300 kilometer range from its 14 liter tank seems possible more on that with a road test ride any of the older 600s on winding roads like these and you might agree that they can get intimidating at times because of the weight because of the fueling because of the way they accelerate the trident doesn't feel like any of that the bike feels nice and light the acceleration feels nice and smooth the power delivery is linear and the fueling feels spot on the throttle isn't choppy and maintaining a clean line through the corner is never too challenging because the power never feels overwhelming unless you are riding on a death wish the power delivery is exceptionally smooth and the meat of the power lies between the 3000 to 8000 rpm mark but the short gearing and a healthy spread of torque between the 3 to 9000 rpm mark makes the trident extremely forgiving to wrong gear selections and the roll on acceleration figures are actually comparable to a street triple r it also doesn't need to remain on the boil all the time like the ktm 390s which makes it an easier motorcycle to live with without compromising on the feel or the power you can exit tight corners in fourth if you like potter around town in fifth at 40 to 50 kilometers an hour without any knocking from the engine and even pull overtakes in fifth the tractability is that good when you go corner carving on roads like these you will realize that the trident doesn't feel as sharp as something like a super sport machine a street triple or even the 390 duke for that matter uh, but that said the turn-ins are not lazy they are more gradual you need to get a hang of it and once you do you realize that you don't even need to hang too much of the bike to arc a clean curve through the corners or through winding roads like these in fact it feels pleasantly agile so much so that it makes a similarly spec street triple r or rs okay not rs street triple r feel relatively bulky heavy relatively that is how nice and light this bike is part of these handling niceties also come from the michelin pilot road 5 tires which have impressed us in the past on motorcycles of various shapes and sizes they are known for their exceptionally good grip and some street triple owners who are using these tell us that their tires have lasted over 10000 kilometers which is good news these will also fare well on the occasional track day that said you could run out of grip from this rubber at extreme leans also on some of the stretches of the dehradun roads which have mixed shredded plastic with the bitumen for a new cost effective model these tires were losing grip quite abruptly now to sum it up this may be the cheapest triumph on sale but it never really feels cheap in its build features or performance in fact i would recommend this package or similarly priced pre-owned street triples from 5 6 years ago including the ones that have more power than the controversial 69 PS output. When the Triumph Street Twin came out, it left me impressed for many reasons. But at the same time, it did not evoke the kind of emotions that the original Bonneville did for me. Somewhere, it felt a bit of a compromise in its size and its feel. But the Trident doesn't do any of that. It feels like it's cut from the same fabric as a Street Triple. It also feels like it's dyed in the same wool, has that same attitude towards fun. And that is what makes it so special. In fact, it doesn't feel like a compromise at all. More importantly, it doesn't feel like an entry-level model at all. There's a lot more character to it and one that is very likable. Have you checked out the Trident yet? What are your thoughts? Would you choose this as your first big bike? If yes, why? If no, why not? Let's discuss in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.